Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Leadership Jam Session. Today's episode is going to consist of a discussion that took place during one of my leadership workshops called the Coaches Jam Session, and that's where I meet with a group of managers once a month to discuss various different leadership topics or challenges that they may be having. And the topic of this discussion was based on how do you keep your employees engaged during these extended COVID times? Meaning for many of us, we still may not be back in the office on a full-time basis or, or we're operating in a hybrid environment. Half the time we're virtual and so forth. So I'm going to drop you into this discussion that takes place after a group activity that I did with them, where I showed them an image of a lighthouse and this lighthouse in the back setting, you see the lighthouse in stormy weather at dusk. And I asked the managers to write down what the image represents to them. As they see the lighthouse, the beam of light shining through the storm, what does this image represent to them? It was a great way to kick off the discussion and you'll be able to then follow along as you listen to the discussion from that point on. So take a listen and I'll come back on the end to highlight a few key takeaways for you. In terms of the topic that we're going to discuss today is related to, you know, how do you keep your employees engaged during extended COVID lockdowns in terms of keeping people engaged, keeping people motivated during times of uncertainty or even during this period we're in? The safety, right? So everybody's experiencing this differently and we really need to understand individually where people are at because whether you have kids at home or kids in college, you know, everyone's experience is different. So you've got to have that safety, that trust with your leader, with your team to really help get through this turbulent time. And so the water is turbulent. There's safety in looking at the lighthouse. So okay. I see it. You see it. All right. Denise? I was going to say in that same vein, Jen, I mean, I feel like I, I look at myself as that lighthouse, that beacon of strength and hope that I mentioned, you know, and stability more than anything, you know, let them know I, I am here. I'm not going anywhere, despite all the craziness that's going on around us and surrounding us. No, I agree, because that's what I put is the light leading the way. And I think that's just for all of us to be that support, to be that person, because it's interesting how many people have said, you're not going anywhere, are you? You're not going to leave me as our, as my leader or my manager. I don't know if you guys have had that, but I've had like almost every single person because they're counting on you to be that strength and that pillar during these times. So I just, it's interesting. I have that ask of me. I'm like, I'm, I'm here guys. I'm not going anywhere, but if they need that reassurance. So that's to me what this represents. Yeah. So it's interesting, right? Naraj, you talked about that pillar, that stability. We are in many, in many aspects, we do represent that that beacon of light right people look to us for that safety they look for us for that 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 stability i think if you can help shine some light in in the darkness you know i mean and it's hard sometimes as a leader because you, you guys probably know oh well, you may have more of the answers than i do but sometimes you're you know trying to help navigate them through some difficult times but if you can just give them one thing to kind of focus on in the future that they can latch on to it, it seems to help sometimes one thing i love that right I, I think that sense of direction, I mentioned it earlier, it's just that sense of where we're going for right now to Jim's point to focus on is so important because things are so turbulent. Things are so uncertain. And if you can give somebody a sense of, of what to focus on in the moment and keep that in front of them, I think it helps uh, reduce a lot of the fear and uncertainty. Right. So the here, the now, and the present, but where are we going, right? Paul, you were going to say something else? Well, Kevin and Jim said it basically, but in, in, in the vacuum, in your basement office or wherever your office is in your house, you start to think like if you're not hearing from your boss, the waters get turbulent, your mind goes crazy, you start to commiserate with friends and you can start to circle the drain. But if as a leader, we give uh, our clear purpose to our team that that remains despite everything that's different now we still have a very clear purpose and a very clear job to do. And I still care about you. It's just that, you know, it just looks different. Yes. So, you know, what's interesting is the, um, the basics really don't change, do they? Right. You know, Good point. 
employees want to know expectations. They want to know what the vision is, where we're headed, but ultimately they want to know you care regardless of the environment, right? So it's so easy for us to get lost in all this ourselves. And yet, you know, goes back to if we're going to be that pillar, right? That, that guiding force, it still comes back to just the basics. A lot of the basics still apply. Maybe some a little bit more than the other, but I think what you said is critical, right? Employees just want to know your care. Hey, Rob, one of the things I was, um, this is me trying to multitask, which is never pretty, but there to just emphasize <laughs> a couple of the, the points that you were making. There was an article in Forbes that was earlier this week, uh, the, 20, the 19th last week, I guess, about empathy being the most important skill in, in leadership in this kind of COVID thing. I don't know if you saw the article. So, you know, the article was saying that, you know, it used to be thought of more as a soft skill, but there's some some data behind it, how that when, you know, people feel safe, more engaged, they're more, um, you know, a couple of you were talking about, you know, keeping them focused on on things we can control. It's easier to do that if there's some sense of, you know, stability, safety. I mean, you know, Tracy, you mentioned like your people are saying like, uh, you're staying, right? You're the one one kind of rock there. So I don't know. I, I, I thought that that was an interesting, I, I can say, I'll send that article. So one of the key concepts here in, in some of the steps to consider is in times like this, you want to lean more on that supportive leadership style, which obviously means, you know, being more empathetic, trying to be more in tune, be more of that sounding board, right? So you can understand what's going on. But it is interesting, the whole safety thing, right? I mean, this gets back into, uh, we're all familiar with uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. One of the, the needs is safety. In times like this, I think several of you brought up when I showed the lighthouse, I think if not, almost everybody thought of safety you know, safe and welcoming. That's one of the key pillars that we need to focus on in this time. We need to make sure our employees view us as providing that safety. Because the other thing you have to remember is they may not have that sense in their personal lives, right? And so that's the other part of this is to understand obviously what's going on at work, but what's, what's going on outside of that that could be impacting them as well, which might be a little bit more difficult to manage or you might not even feel comfortable managing through that or even asking questions around that. Oh, by the way, I did want to highlight one thing. What was interesting with the, even though there was some common themes with the lighthouse exercise, there was different perspectives though. Different things resonated with different people, right? Gets back to the supportive piece in terms of understanding and knowing your people's needs. Because what they need is going to be different from one versus the other. Now I'm stating the obvious, but you can't assume what's working for one in this time is going to work for all of them. So that tailored approach is critical. Other best practices or other things that anybody has, has done. Raj. Yeah, I was just thinking of one uh, where I know we're all thinking this, we're doing this, and that's really just encouragement, encouragement for those low performers, encouraging them because that's maybe not where they're used to being. And they're going through, you know, using your visual, some really treacherous times. But we don't want to swing the pendulum just to one end, also celebrating and recognizing the performers, the high performers. Mm-hmm. They need, you know, you're going to see both sides in the team. And it's it's really up to you to maintain and um, the discipline that you are really there to support your whole team. Okay. Thoughts on that? We agree. Jim? So one of the, um, PJ, and you can jump in here too, one of the... Um, the contest that our VP of sales has encouraged us to kind of work on, uh, we call it champions for customers. People that win the award get these crazy boxing gloves, but it's uh, the point of this award is focusing, as Naraj said, on some people that are exhibiting strong behaviors, the core behaviors that we're trying to focus on, proficiency and disease state knowledge. Uh, you know, we kind of have core behaviors, knowing your business, knowing your products, knowing your competition, be able to make impact executing, you know, all these sorts of things. And people that may not be at the top of the performance thing right now, but that are exhibiting those behaviors, uh, we come together as a leadership team and we kind of decide on these folks. And then after we recognize the top performers, like on the East call, we're, we're doing shout outs to these people that are kind of, you know, in the fight. We're just in the in the infancy of launching, launching this thing. But I got to tell you that like the people that were won, some of the messages that they sent uh, we're, we're pretty, uh, we're pretty cool. They, they really, you know, you think like it's this crazy boxing gloves, but, um, 
they, they were touched by hearing uh, the things that they're due to kind of battle through these unforeseen circumstances that we find themselves in. So it's been, it's been a, a pleasant surprise. Hmm. That's great. That's awesome. it's, it's a pretty cool program. We, 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 we renamed it in the West uh, going the distance, but it's the same, exactly the same program. And when they win these boxing gloves, they then sign them, take a picture with them, <laughs> send the picture in. So it, it all comes full circle. And then in the next month, the next set of winners, uh, those winners will send their current gloves, signed gloves to the next winners. So then the next winners will do the same thing. And so it just kind of keeps the uh, traveling boxing gloves alive. And it does help actually, Jim, I think you're right. I mean, people are responding to it and <laughs> people who are receiving these are loving it. So let me ask you. That's a great idea. I might have to steal that one. Yeah. So why do you think people are latching on to it? I think it's in Raj's point. I think it's um, focusing on, or maybe that's a piece of it, but focusing on people that are battling through that may not be seeing the high performance, but you're reinforcing their uh, persistent and, you know, mm -hmm. positive behaviors. All right. So the first piece here is, you know, as we talked about, just having that supportive leadership, right? And and for all the, the reasons we talked about, the, the second thing on the list is recognition and rewarding and acknowledging and appreciating your employees, even the small wins, right? So, Naraj, to your point, I'm glad you brought this up. In times like this, it is important to acknowledge even the little things, even, you know, that, that such as even affirmation by sending like a simple thank you goes a long way, right? So the appreciation recognition is important in times like this, right? Across the board. Yes, Denise. I was going to say, this is really a silly thing that I did, but um, I provided my team with, have you ever heard of those damn it dolls? I don't know no. if you've oh, ever yeah. seen them. They're so funny. I mean, and they're they're designed to slam and it has a really funny <laughs> saying on it when you're very <laughs> frustrated. And, you know, we're going through some growing pains as a startup biotech and as we're expanding and, you know, people get frustrated sometimes. They take his damn it doll and everybody just slam it on the desk during our calls <laughs> when I have to deliver bad news. You know, <laughs> damn it doll. And I tell you, that's been a lot of that's fun, awesome. the damn it all, for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is pretty awesome. So that example too, Denise, kind of ties into where I was going with this, is that it's important to come up with other activities to shift focus and help fill some of the voids. And it's always good to, so one of the third, the third you know, step, if you will, is to continue to focus on growth and development of your employees. Right. This this contest or I don't know if it's a contest gym or to me, what I'm hearing, though, is it's still focusing on developing skills. So, again, it still comes back to some of the basics, does it not? Acknowledging, recognizing even some of the training or some of the competitiveness. Right. You're still trying to focus on what are the core behaviors and coming up in a way to make sure people are refreshing on it, but are demonstrating the competency around that, too. Right in a fun way that also to me sounds like it's also promoting some type of team bonding along the way encouraging engagement because that's what we all miss is kind of that human exactly. element so the engagement i think is really key and denise i love your damn it doll so i'm going to look that up <laughs> another fun one which i'm sure pj or kevin might have seen is kind of the elephant in the room and a friend of ours, Rick, down in Texas, Ricky D, um, he used to bring out the elephant and they'd place it on the table and it was like access, you know, access was, you know, the elephant in the room. And so oh. it was a way to kind of bring everybody together, like, let's get it out. The elephant in the room is we're all still stuck at home where we can't see our customers. And it was kind of a, a fun way to rally everyone around it, but then let's move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Love it. I just want to piggyback on what Jen said. I think that engagement piece is so important. Sales is a lonely job. I mean, that's a lot of what we do, right? We it's do even it. more lonely now because we're not even engaging with our customers like we have in the past. That was an engagement piece. Now we're doing it over screen and it's not the same. So I think driving some personal, just away from work engagement that I can control seems to alleviate or replace some of that need, right? We're, I know, of course, I'm very social, but I need that, right? Not all people do. But what I find is that engagement across the board helps everybody connect better and support each other as a team and, and use less of the damn it doll than, than is probably needed. To me, the elephant in the room or one of the, there's more than one elephants in the room is that there's, I, I feel like 
the reps, sales reps have more time on their hands now than ever before. And going back to what you said, uh, Rob, about maybe it's a good time to do some training and do some of those basics. It is actually a great time to double down on training and not from the training department, but utilizing the resources that like our company offers all sorts of opportunities to learn about Mm -hmm. um, public speaking and leadership skills and business acumen and all sorts of stuff in our learning uh, uh, system. I haven't really done this with except for one person where they announced that they really are not good at a particular thing. It's something that I, we've been coaching on. And now they're actually taking classes inside our little learning system. So it might be a great time to double down on that learning, keep them busier in the idle time so there's less troubled waters. Yep. And also to really kind of double down on their professional development plan. So if they have an individual development plan where they want to grow into another role, great time to start building that plan, talking to all the people, say they want to get into a different division of the organization. They start talking to those people because that idle time can be used. And that, in my experience, does keep people engaged in their role and doing more of what you want them to do. Curious your thoughts on that. 100% accurate. I think you covered every one of my talking points around growth and development. To continue. Oh, you sent your notes accidentally to me before the call. Ah, well, thank you. But no, Paul's 100% accurate, right? Um, and what's interesting too is we also should be reassessing the skills of our employees because times have changed that may require some different skill sets mm-hmm. in a virtual setting. And I'm sure there are some of your employees that may struggle with you know, delivering presentations or having calls on a virtual platform because it is different. There's some different skills involved. So this could be a great opportunity. Again, go back to the basics, reassess skills. Um, are there anything, is there anything new that has emerged that, that we should be coaching them on? Again, that occupies some of the, the voids that are there now. All right, so let me wrap up by highlighting a few key takeaways for you. There was really three distinct steps that we need to take as managers to make sure we keep our employees engaged during these times. The first is we really need to demonstrate and leverage supportive leadership. And we talked about the lighthouse in terms of that beacon of light that helps to make our employees feel safe in the workplace, right? And so demonstrating the empathy piece and showing that you do care about your employees, making sure that you understand the needs of your employee, which is going to be different from one employee to the next. Now, the second step we talked about really came under the umbrella of creating a sense of belonging through rewarding and appreciating your employees. And some of that came through in terms of recognizing and praising individual contribution, celebrating the small wins, perhaps maybe instituting some different events in a fun way, maybe some competitions, anything that you can do to help fill the voids that are there. And the third piece is we really do need to invest in growth and development. As you heard some of the managers talk about, it's a great opportunity if there is some downtime to make sure that we're building the skills, the behaviors, and competencies of our employees, particularly as times are changing, reassessing the skills of our employee based on identifying any new gaps that might have emerged that require different skills and new learnings. And I do want to wrap up just by thanking the managers who contributed and sharing their best practices during this workshop. And I appreciate you listening to today's episode. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe. And we'll see you on the next Leadership Jam session. Thanks. Take care.